Hello everyone and happy Easter if you celebrate! Today I'm bringing a little bit of a shorter video that I'm also filming totally off without any script so <laughs> bear with me. If it's chaotic, I'm so sorry. As you can tell from the title of the video, I will be talking about The First Law World by Joe Abercrombie because I read all the works from December to January and they changed my life. So obviously I have to rank them. Like genuinely, I don't remember the last time a book has been this influential in my life. Maybe Oathbringer because Oathbringer was my favorite fantasy book until now and now I don't can't choose between my number one on this list and Oathbringer so we'll see. Anyways, let's get into it. Yeah, get into it! First we have The Blade itself. It's a solid start. It does the job by introducing the characters but it really lacks when it comes to the plot and the theming. And I think even Joe Abercrombie has said that if he was to write The Blade itself again, he would give it a bit more plot. So for me, it's, it's a solid start, but the books that come after it are so much better. So it's gonna be an eight. But then the sequel, Before They Are Hanged, is gonna go straight up to fifth place because, ah, when I read this book, I finally got the hype. It, <clears throat> It was basically, Joe Abercrombie says that the premise for the first law is what if the Lord of the Rings was more cynical? So I think cynical is the right word. I didn't really understand that until I read this book. It tugged at the heartstrings. The Glockta storyline was fantastic. Other people's storylines also stood out to me so much as the interpersonal relationships really started coming out. After finishing the trilogy, I think I have even more appreciation for this book. So it's going in fifth place. And then the conclusion to the trilogy, I think that it is overall constructed better than Before They Are Hanged, but I had more of an emotional investment in Before They Are Hanged, so barely. I'm putting Last Argument of Kings in number six. but. Still, when I finished this book, I sent like a 44 minute <laughs> voice note to one of my friends because I was just losing it. <laughs> okay, then we get to the standalones and don't even ask. Yes, they are mandatory. Like in my opinion, I was going to skip them after the ending of Last Argument of Kings, but I'm so happy I didn't because they bring so, so, so much to the Age of Madness trilogy. So do not skip the standalones, please. <laughs> The first one, Best Surf Cold, I think I hyped it up in my head too much because everyone's like, ooh, it's like the Count of Monte Cristo, but like more intense. And, and I love the Count of Monte Cristo, so I was so hyped. And I'd say that the first three fifths are like the Count of Monte Cristo. And then it turns into more of like a war story. And it didn't connect with me as much in that latter two two-fifths. That being said, I still really liked it. People like to say that Monza, the main character, is not that interesting, but I really enjoy her. And there is like, I, I thought she was very tragic in some ways, but so badass in others and oh, great. But uh, we also have this mercenary guy, Nikomo Koska, who plays a huge part in this re revenge story. And I thought that he was like the emotional center and Mm, oh my god, I, I loved his snark. I think Leanne uh, described him as the Jack Sparrow of the First Law universe, and I think that's such an apt way to describe him, but I'd say he's better than Jack Sparrow. Bitch, I said what I said. And then we have Shivers, a character who's introduced in Before They Are Hanged that I thought was annoying and inconsequential because of this book and the ones further down the line, has now skyrocketed and is in, probably in my top five first law characters. All that being said, I wasn't in love with it as much as I hoped I would be. It actually, I think, took me the, mo the longest to read. So I'm gonna put it in seventh place. But then we get to the heroes. And if you watched my favorites of 2023 video, uh, you're already spoiled for this, but I loved it. I thought, from like the reviews because people were saying oh it's just people talking around a campfire there's like three action scenes and it's a war story and and i was like yeah that doesn't sound that interesting like it doesn't sound like something that i would enjoy i loved it i think about it constantly i had to elevate it because the more i think about it the more i i 
Ah, I was so invested in every single POV. And yeah, it is just like three days of battle with like one day before, one day after. But uh, go watch my favorites video uh, for more information on this, but uh, it's going straight to number three because I love it. And to be honest, I don't know if it might not overtake my number two at some day. The third standalone is Red Country, and Red Country is a Western. So I'll preface this by saying that I'm not a huge Western girl, and I think that this is why this is gonna be my number 10. To be honest, I kind of felt bored most of the time, and I didn't really enjoy my reading experience because I didn't connect to our main character, Shy. Um, I did like Temple. There's this law, um, lawyer character. His name is Temple and I thought he was the standout character. Um, the ending of Red Country also gives us a send-off to one of the characters that we've been following for like the majority of the series. So I thought that this character's send-off was very beautiful. So yeah, the send-off of that character and Temple were my highlights, but other than that I was kind of bored. So there has to be a book that goes in 10th place and for me it's just Red Country. Sorry. Not sorry. But that brings me to Sharp Ends, the short story collection, and it was such a delight. <laughs> it opens up with a Glockta backstory chapter, which was insane. I kind of wished that it was from Glockta's point of view, because when we start the series, he's a cripple, and this is the short story of before he was a cripple. And I wonder how different his perspective was, and, you know, especially since he has such a unique internal monologue. And you can, like, just from reading one or two sentences, you can tell that this is Glockta speaking. So I really wished that it was from the perspective of Glockta, but it's from the perspective of a different character. And then the last chapter is... A, a, uh, is Logan's chapter before the start of the first trilogy, and that was like a five star. Like, that one... That final short story was so, so, so good. Then interspersed are these short stories of these two girls, Javra, who's from the north, and Shev, who is a uh, pickpocket from Westport, I believe. And they were so fun, but I think that the short stories ranged from burden to get through to this is the best thing ever. For example, the short story that stands out to me was when they meet this guy called Warren of Bly, who is also in The Heroes. So maybe I'm a little bit biased, but that thing was so good. <laughs> it was so good. It was so funny. You ha I kind of have to balance out the amazing short stories with the short stories that were like, mm, not as great. It's gonna have to go to number nine. And also because it's short stories. So like, how can I compare short stories to the full length novels, which I love, 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 love so much. I just can't do it. I can't. And then we get to the Age of Madness trilogy. I was so hyped to arrive here because everyone says that everything else is a warm up. And I was scared that I like almost overhyped myself for this trilogy, but I didn't. When I say Joe Abercrombie changed my life, I mean his Age of Madness trilogy changed my life because it's it's really rare to read something that genuinely alters your worldview and these books are so cynical but it's never to the point of being edgelordy they just feel honest and the fact that they're so honest it's heartbreaking see i have a problem because when i don't like something i can blabber on about it for like ages but when i love something i just bleh. i have no words <laughs> i can't speak it starts off with a little hatred, which is gonna go to number four, right between the heroes and before they are hanged. Very, very good start. And Miles leagues ahead of the blade itself. It took me a while to enjoy these characters as much, but the plot really, and the theming, because the theming is already like very strong. You also have like this prophecy uh, told to you in the first, in the first chapter, and that already kind of gets you intrigued of like, oh, what's gonna happen? And then the way that some parts of this prophecy are fulfilled are mind-boggling. Um, Orso, Savine, Rika, Leo, they just, they have such good introductions, and this book distills them who they are so so well. But then we have the trouble with peace which goes into number two, and everything that happens in book one, just better. So much better. There's this plot line in this book that had me shaken. Shaken. And the ending of this book, 
It was so bold of Abercrombie to write that. And then we have number one, which is The Wisdom of Crowds. When I said that the ending of The Trouble with Peace was bold, I... It's nothing. Nothing compared with the ending of The Wisdom of Crowds. I swear, if I ever meet Joe Abercrombie, I'm gonna bring him like a therapy bill and be like, here, there are these two characters at the end. The people who read it know what I'm talking about, but when stuff happens with them, bawled my eyes out. It was, I was so emotionally invested. I usually am not a big fan of revolution books, but I realized that it's just because I've never read a revolution book that was written well, or with so much thought and honesty as the wisdom of crowds was built. And it was crazy because I was reading through the book and I was like a third of the way in and I was like, where else could this go? Where else could this go? And I didn't know. And then Joe Abercrombie would like introduce another storyline and I'd be like, whoa, what a curveball. But it was even better than the one before. And then he'd throw another curveball and it'd be even better than the thought line before that. This man is a master. I did a calculation where I found out that I get a five-star read around every 60 books that I read. So I was shocked when I got my first five-star read in January. It's gonna be really hard for me to find something this year that's gonna beat it. Oh, um, I don't think it's on the tier ranker, but I also read The Great Change and Other Lies. It's also a short story collection, but it accompanies um, The Age of Madness. I'd say the last short story was mind-boggling. It changed my life. The first story was really, really good. The two in the middle were okay, but they were nowhere near as good as the first one. And leagues away from the last one because the last one was the, one of the most effed up things that I've ever even laid my eyes on. Uh, it was illegal. I think it's gonna go, I don't know, it's to be honest, I kind of think that it balances out with sharp ends. Anyways, that's all for me. Read Joe Abercrombie now and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.